In the last couple of videos, we looked at how to go about naming acyclic ethers using common nomenclature and IUPAC nomenclature. Those were ethers where there were no oxygen atoms within the ring. Now we're going to look at identifying common heterocyclic ethers. A heterocycle is a molecule that contains any atom other than carbons in the ring. And so with the examples that we have here of a five-membered ring in the upper left-hand corner with an oxygen or a six-membered ring with an oxygen, those are both examples of heterocyclic ether. So how do we go about naming those? We're not going to go into depth about naming heterocyclic ethers that have a bunch of branches and things like that, but you should be familiar with and able to apply the names of some specific heterocyclic ethers that don't have a bunch of wild branches and such coming off of them. So let's take a look at that. What we will do is write out structures of our common heterocyclic ethers that you should be able to provide the names of. And the names that are used for these are a mixture of common names and IUPAC names being applied. And I will warn you that these names are pretty different than most of the names that we have looked at so far this semester or last semester. And I generally despise using the term memorize with regard to chemistry classes, but really for mastering and getting a handle on some of these names, you will need to, to memorize them. So Oxytane is the name that we use to refer to a four-membered ring that has an oxygen atom in it. This could have some branches and things coming off of, we're not going to go into that much depth. Just oxytane is if you have a four membered ring with an oxygen atom in it. We can upgrade that to a five membered ring. So a five membered ether ring like so with single bonds all the way around the ring. We refer to most typically as tetrahydrofuran. This is a really common organic solvent because we are going to learn later on in the chapter that there aren't too terribly many reactions that ethers will participate in. And as a result, ethers are really commonly used as solvents because solvents are the soup that we use to run our organic reactions in. And when you're thinking about just something that you want to act as a solvent that is not directly participating in the reaction as a reactant, we want things that are not particularly reactive. And so ethers are common solvents with tetrahydrofuran being a very generally useful solvent. Another name that this goes by, tetrahydrofuran, can also be referred to as oxolane. O-X-O-L-A-N-E -E, as another way of referring to that. Now there is a relative of tetrahydrofuran, which we abbreviate as THF or oxalane, and that is the situation where we have a five-membered ring with double bonds here and here. We refer to that as furan. Now the little trick I have for remembering that this is furan is that F I think of as meaning five. There are five atoms in this ring, and so we use the term furan. You will notice that the difference between THF and furan is just these two double bonds in here. And the tetrahydro part refers to the fact that at these four positions here, 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 and here, we have additional hydrogens relative to furan, which has fewer hydrogens at these four positions. So that's where we differentiate tetrahydrofuran, which has the four extra hydrogen atoms, versus furan. Similarly, if we upgrade this one more time, one more carbon atom to six carbon atoms, we have two different structures that we can look at. One is this six-membered ring with an oxygen as the heteroatom and only single bonds all the way around. The other is like this, double bond here, double bond here. And the names of these, for starters over on this side, lower right-hand corner, we call this pyran with our six-membered ring and the double bonds here. Then Analogously to the situation of furan becoming tetrahydrofuran, we bring in those extra hydrogens and get rid of these sites of unsaturation. The pyran analogously becomes tetrahydropyran. So let's go ahead and write that out for you. Tetrahydropyran. And you could abbreviate that as THP. 
So then just one more on our list of must know cyclic ethers is the scenario where you have a six membered ring and there's not just one ether group, but it's actually a diether. It has an ether group here, an ether group here. And this specific structure where you have the two oxygen atoms here and here, we refer to as 1,4-dioxane. 1,4-dioxane. And you may be saying, where do you come up with the one and the four out of that? The nomenclature numbering of this even is kind of weird relative to what we've talked about so far. So normally we number just the carbon atoms in a molecule. In this case, the way that the one four is derived here is that the oxygen is named as number one, two, three, four. So that's how they come up with the one four dioxane. But that numbering of the heteroatoms is a pretty unconventional way of doing things relative to what we've talked about so far this semester and last, um, but I just wanted to make sure you were aware of what the origin of that was. So you should be familiar with these six compounds and if presented with the name of any of these six, you should know what the structure is or if you're given the structure, you should be able to tell me what the name of that particular compound is. And you may come across some of these when we are doing reactions of ethers or synthesizing ethers, you may need to be aware of some of these structures.